you know, black folks, and basically they, it probably was a 6.6 or something like that, but anyway, it's coming up as a 6.3. I'll go to RSOE and we'll see what we get, but basically what I'm showing you is a ionospheric, your ionosphere, we have a lot of spheres, as I showed you, remember when I showed you the airplane data and all the uh, different heights and stuff on uh, our coronal, and then I have this. So our neutron monitor that we have, the Russia gives us a feed over there that gets and shows you that, and then let me pull you up to the, and just about every time we show you this information, then we get an earthquake, and we're going to show you right, right here. So when you're in these areas, don't even, I mean, this should have been possibly more of a weak area there, okay, and then also over here in Africa, and also there. North Africa. Now we'll go to RSOE and see what's going on. I haven't really paid attention to what all the quakes we've got, but check this out. So there's our 6.3 in Mexico. Now if I hit refresh, we might get something new, so I'll go ahead and do that. I'll First I'll drag it up. There you go, 6.3 down there. Let's get you that. So there's your data on that. Let's see what RSOE says. And then basically that's the first 6 point something we've had for a while. This might have been six down here, in Papua New Guinea, the New Ireland region. That might have been a six. Otherwise, we had that in Guerrero, Mexico before. And we're just scrolling down through the data here. And remember, a lot of three. Don't get me wrong, there's one point something out there somewhere, but most everything is like a three and up. Because when you see a 2.7, 2.9, you can pretty much guarantee when it hits on the mag, and we've proven that in the past, they take ticks off. Then the last one was a 6.0 that we showed you over in Japan up here in the talk group a long time ago, back on that time there. So remember, we're a long ways out of the 188 again coming around. This could be the end of this pattern here, but then the idea that, one eight, that 188 days will fill out, and then the idea that the next closest object we have, it's not in December like everybody's telling you, it is, and I'll have information on that in the future, and everybody can go to JPL also and find out what they find, but I've already found what I found. And basically, uh, in 2013, in February, in January and February is when we got the closest objects coming to uh, by Earth, okay? That's going to give us more magnetical, and that'll be in that 188-day cycle, I believe. Now, on our auroral, we're way off on the which we've been known to see, and, and basically we have it, which what's one good sign is we have a smaller eye on that, okay? And then basically we're dead on on the North Pole, and there's not too much of anything showing up on the uh, stereo SOHO, okay? So I'll take a peek at uh, Factual. We'll go take a look at, and then the, no, the one thing is, the main reason I was even going to make the video here is we got to go to this, that basically over the weekend we had an ICME, because we'll, we'll show you a map on that. Because basically we're going to get a glancing CME on the 7th, 6th and the 7th, and you can't miss it. Let me pump this up a little bit. We'll give you like a, what, maybe this will work, 150, there we go. So you'll see the Earth is right here, and we're going to get a glancing. And we basically, you probably had some places around the country that maybe had uh, down power on the weekend, uh, I believe on Saturday. There was some static activity. Uh, I wasn't on the net looking at the data and stuff on the weekend, so uh, I was busy doing some other stuff. The Carousel will tell you I was on the internet. Yeah, I was on the internet, but I wasn't looking <laughs> at the the power stuff or the static electrical. So, but we got a static with CME coming. So the idea that this may have been an explorer, we'll go look at. Uh, uh, I can go to uh, spaceweather.com and we'll see what's going on on that. Okay, so this is what the data they got at Space Weather. And let me go back a page. So basically, the that solar flare we're getting is going to be a B and an A, which is good news that it'll be smaller, but the idea that we will probably get some pretty good static action from that. Okay, and it shows on this coming out in the 6th and the 7th, okay? And that's what I was wondering, because when I was at Solar Artist, too, it was not an X flare. And someone said about an X flare, there's somebody not talking about what they knew about. They just basically knew that we had a flare, and it wasn't an X flare. It was just a... So a high B flare, because the idea that it wouldn't be much farther, but we do break out on the idea that it's losing data, so it was pretty good CME, because the idea that it affected the data feed 
on the chart. As you can see, it was a high B, probably moving into a C, so it could possibly be a C. Let's look at the other one, what space weather says. If I'm catching up on the weekend's action. So no matter what, this is what to pay attention to because on the 6th and the 7th, we're going to get some action. And like I say, I know of places, people emailed me and said down power on Saturday. So places had static eddy ground action on uh, our Aurora over the weekend. Let's look at the pictures that they've got. Now this is the, your map and your date and time too. I'm sorry about not having the date and time there. Hang on, we'll move it up just enough that you get the date and time. There you go. So on this 7th, 6th and 7th, okay? You keep watching it, and it's as soon as it comes, it's the 5th, 6th, and 7th, okay? So we're going to get some static action. Uh, make sure you got everything grounded out good, ladies and gentlemen. So everybody needs to be have heads up when we start moving into anything, this being in your area, okay? Uh, whenever we show you these areas here, so the deep bridge over in, uh, I would say more than likely, Puerto Rico is probably going to get some action, okay? Puerto Rico and uh, Cuba and so forth in the big, uh, what do they call it again, the ledge out there. There's a real deep gash out there in the Gulf of Mexico. But before you enter the Gulf of Mexico out there, to Cuba and stuff like that, there's a huge ledge in there. So they've been getting quakes for like crazy. So the idea with this one in Mexico, maybe it'll release it a little bit. But I would say that more than likely that's going to be uh, a possibility of having something next will be something and basically they already been having some okay they had uh, and we've been they've been constantly getting this stuff 3.7 3.1 3.0 3.5 and that's right here folks all this here so they're probably gonna getting some more and then there was this four point something below that too so Just below the 6.3, there was a 4 point something, 4.5. More than likely, it was a 5 point. So uh, a little action up on the coast. Again, that's normal there. We've been seeing that like crazy. That's pounding and pounding there. Uh, you got to remember that they also had uh, Utah and stuff had some stuff a while back. That should pop in. There we go. You got all this stuff here. 4.4 off the Oregon coast, I think, or and then... All this stuff has been in the U.S. here, folks. 3.3 uh, down there somewhere, U United States, uh, Missouri, something like that. I'm not. I, I'm not. I'm just looking at where it's at. Louisiana, Missouri, somewhere area there. That 3.3. So this is the last two weeks or so of quakes, and there's a lot more than that, folks. Because basically, this is like I say, this is just the last two weeks. So around the world, if anybody's new in here. Uh, anybody that's normal in here, they were used. They're used to this, but this is around the world, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Earthquakes all over the world, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. And volcanoes are going crazy too. Let's go to RSOE. So I went to RSOE, and I guess basically on the second, uh, we've got a a big wave. So more than likely they've we've had probably a quake out in the Pacific somewhere that we got a big wave on this here information here. I'll zoom this to like what well, we'll give you 150 and you can read it a little bit better. There you go. And let's go look at it on the map. And the reason I always and that's what I did I hit on that there and then the you can go to RSOE and get all this information. They must have had some volcano action. So if that time uh, correlates with a quake that we had out there, or maybe just a volcano action, so something made a big wave. People noticed it and at least called in and reported it. So you've seen the report on that. And as you see, it's right there. I, I can highlight it. And there you go, giant wave impact. That was at 257. Ocean East. Okay. I don't know where they get the East at, but you've seen the data on it. So anyway, they reported a wave, probably fishermen and so forth and so on, or the, anybody that lives along the coast. So the latest quake we had there would have been. Now I wasn't. I was showing you Kilauea action before, and I didn't know ab about watching it being in the orange area. It may have been in the orange area for a while. We'll look, look at the details. Okay, folks, so basically I was giving you a good two weeks or so or maybe even a month head start on this thing. I was showing you the idea that those light propagations were hitting Kilauea pretty good. And the last 24 hours continued to erupt at two locations. So 
she's waking up. So, uh, keep an eye on the big island, and if you're over there at the big island, then stay on high ground to stay away from any tsunami possibilities of anything, and uh, enjoy yourself. Mahalo, and uh, aloha, and love the big island, and stay away from the volcano at a good distance to not have rock and lava burn and ruin your day. So, okay, this this is the freshest thing we've got from, uh, and as you see, that the uh, magnetical is <coughs> combined to the meatball on mercury. Okay, so mercury's uh, either doing a CME reactive flare to the meatball, or because we know it's mercury. Okay, we know enough by looking at this. We've seen Venus, and we know the sun is in the supergiants over here to the right, and they're massive along the huge array of millions of miles that you can see in space when we have the Soho shots. And as you can see, also the sun is going, what the hell, too? Ma major league to the meatball here, okay? So, because that is the flipping meatball, and you can't miss it. It's right there in front of your face. Okay, and now Earth is somewhere at a V between, we are somewhere at a V connection between Venus and Mercury here. This is Mercury over here. So once again, like I'm telling you, more than likely Earth is one of these bright here that you see. Somewhere, because we're somewhere in a V pattern right here and, and right here from Venus. Now we could be up higher here, but Earth is somewhere in this shot, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, because we're somewhere in front of the meatball. Okay, and the meatball is at our flipping back door. That is the flipping meatball. That is the biggest god darn dang ding diggity damn frickin' frackin' frickin' thing you're ever gonna see in your frippin' life. All right? Flippin' ass life, ladies and gentlemen. That's the biggest god dang thing you're ever gonna see. Now, hopefully, if we can make everybody be nice and calm, hopefully this is Earth up here, you know, that we're way the hell up high on it, and then it's not that we're not down here in between the V, that we're at a high V action. Maybe this is Earth. It would be nice if they'd show us what Earth is, because we know Earth is between here. Mercury and Venus at a V somewhere. Earth is somewhere here. Okay? We're somewhere. It, hopefully it's either that's there or there. Let's go to the freshest shot. And here you go, folks. We have that CME coming at us, and we have showed you in the earlier. And it's nice to have star clusters, hopefully, here like this that eat up a lot of this energy that's coming off the sun and there you see more CME uh, sphere reaction from mercury right there to the meatball and also the CME action that's coming to the right. Okay, some more astounding shots from Soho H1A High 1A Okay, Lasco Lasco High 1A Sechi, okay, right here. The meatball and you got mercury to the left you can't miss, you know that that's Mercury there. And this is Venus. And Venus also reacting big time. And then this huge solar flare that we were getting off the sun and the supergiants. And also wild material that you're able to see. Suns and stars and planets. Because the planets are the ones that are dark that get lit up. Okay? There's plenty of stars out there. But also the darkness of dark objects like you see right there. Of some dark planets that get lit up by the CME and like I say Earth is somewhere in a V somewhere in some sort of a V Earth is like directly at a V of Venus and Mercury out here somewhere or like I say barely having the big old meatball at our back door and there's a huge CME that's coming in and that's all the data that I showed you earlier in this video that's that CME that's going to uh, closely glance by Earth okay so there's that huge CME basically was going on on the 30th Okay, so there you go. There's a picture of it uh, right there off the data. I mean, your eyes do not lie to you, ladies and gentlemen. So we're going to get some nice weather out of that, and we're going to probably get some static electrical. You'll probably have some power outages someplace, possibly. Okay, it's a good test for electrical grids. Let's put it that way. Okay, and as you see, Mercury has doing its little uh, coronal mass ejection of its atmosphere. Because we have learned that the idea that what Bino tells you is the truth because your eyes don't lie. Because the idea, every time you get one of these CMEs and also the big old meatball, the big magnet out there. And then we get to all this magnetic action and uh, the Earth is shivering because it's probably scared shitless. Because the idea that Earth is just but a speck, okay. 
So 